Well, hello there, and welcome to this week's episode of Grow Wealthy Grooming. As always, I am your host, River Lee. I'm the founder of the Savvy Groomer, where we teach pet groomers and savvy pet. Pep- blah, 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 blah. So you know it's live, right? So, long story short, I teach pet professionals how to find their profit and purpose while enjoying their passion. So, I'm going to go ahead and start getting ready. Uh, I it feels so weird. I'm like on time. I'm rocking and rolling. I'm feeling good here. Feeling good. Uh, I'm like, man, watch. I'll not be live or something's going to like mess up. I feel like things are going too easy. But let's go ahead and talk about this week's topic. Da, 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 da. We're going to talk about membership and one-on-one business models and pricing. Now, if you guys are live with me, you know, let me know if there's any echoing or any issues. That is always the best because honestly, I never know until I hear it later. So if you guys want to hop on YouTube, just go to youtube.com slash Savvy Groomer. You can actually hop on live with me. And I really like that because it's really fun to get the interaction. And if you have questions about this, then I'm more than happy to answer those. So let's go ahead and talk about what a membership is first. If you have membership grooming, now there's a lot of different ways to go about this. The most common way is to have a set number of spaces in your shop. So let's say you're going to groom 100 pets and then those people pay you monthly to be in your membership. Now, traditionally memberships, you would actually have them pay a month in advance. They would pay whether or not they come to an appointment because they are paying for the spot not necessarily the actual grooming. What does that mean? So that means that if I have a hundred dogs a month I need to groom and I'm gonna groom all hundred dogs at a hundred dollars and let's say Fluffy the Shih Tzu says, oh, I can't make it this month, I'm gonna be in Florida. You would say that's fine because I because I have a set number of members, I'm not going to add a member just for one month. So they have to pay whether or not they get the dog groomed. Um, and this is very different and very important to point out because a lot of times, you know, people miss the whole point of what is a membership for and what it's not for. Now, there are different people who have different kinds of memberships. Um, it, you may choose to have a membership where they pay a fee in order to have the ability to book with you. I've seen that kind of membership. You may want a membership where maybe they don't prepay, maybe they pay when they come, but again, there's only a certain amount of people. Um, You can build a membership model anyway, maybe that's for just grooming, maybe that's unlimited baths, and unlimited baths is what I had when I had my shop, but everything was set up in a way that people couldn't abuse it. Because people will abuse it if you can, if you let them. So anyway, so that is what a basic overview of what a membership grooming business would be like. Now let's move on to one-on-one. So a lot of us know what one-on-one is. One-on-one means that when the dog comes in or the cat comes in, you groom that pet straight through. Hi Erica, good to see you. And when you groom that pet straight through, what's going to happen is that as soon as the pet is done, they're going to be picked up. Now some people do put dogs and kennels some people will put them in like little play pens or x pens i mean some people will literally just wait until the pet is picked up so there's lots of different ways you can do one-on-one but the main point is that unlike a traditional salon where you literally have dogs being rotated all the time this really limits the amount of pets that you are doing so first I want to, now again, these are very different business models, but I feel like we don't talk about them very often in the grooming industry, which is really weird because they're growing in prop popularity. Um, so with a membership, how would you price? Well, just like if you're going to have a set number of spots, you've got to figure out what that number of spots is going to be. So if we're, again, let's say we're going to groom 100 dogs a month. Now, that 100 dogs a month would be, very, for very easy math, five dogs a day, five days a week, right? So five times five is 25 times four weeks a month. That is your 100 dogs. 
So I have to look at how much money I want to earn. Now you should figure out how much you want to earn. Plus, you also want to add in your overhead, and then you would divide that by how many dogs you would do. That is a very simplified version of how to do that. It's kind of like if someone says, how do you bathe a dog? And you're like, with soap and water. Or someone says, how do you groom a dog? And you're like, carefully. No, just kidding. With finesse. So, so that is the basic premise of how you would begin pricing that membership model. Now, there's other factors that come in. For instance, you know, like a, ba a bath only one. So let's say if you're like, instead of just having that kind of model, let's say I want to have one where they can have unlimited baths. It's a great option, especially with bathers that are gonna be there anyway. This is what I had. I had bathers all the time. And because I was constantly training new people, just because that's the nature of the beast. If you're gonna have uh, a salon with staff, you're gonna have constantly have staff that are moving on, getting pregnant and deciding to stay, you know, at home with their babies, or if they're college kids, they're gonna finish college and move away. Um, Unfortunately, it takes us about two years to train somebody to be a groomer, and then most people leave the industry after five. So we've got about three years of a sweet spot. It's a very unfortunate thing, but it is what it is. So it was great. That business model where people were coming in once a week generally for a bath was great for me because what it allowed me to do is have my bather brushers get very good at bathing and blow drying dogs because we were always busy, because we always had dogs in. So even if we had our, um, you know, our regular grooming clients cancel, the members would come in because they've already paid for it. So even if it was raining, it didn't matter because they were coming in next week anyway. So they got really good at practicing on those dogs and those dogs were so well behaved because they were groomed all the time. Um, and there were little fail safes we had put into the membership so that no one could abuse it. Um, and then we had two options. You could either pay a flat fee on top of that, and then we groomed your dog every month whenever they were there and we had time, we would just groom your dog. Or you could get a groom and you get 10% off of it. So most people, when they're offered those options, they generally pick to have the dog groomed every month because then your dog always looks maintained. And again, that was a wonderful uh, opportunity for my business because I was constantly training new young groomers and so having dogs that were bathed and blow dried all the time they had built up that really nice relationship with that dog and then they got to practice you know it's like okay we'll just do the body this week just do the body just you know do a half inch comb on the body and because that dog was done every week every week they could just put the comb over the dog not literally the comb you know I'm talking about snap on comb so that was great for them. They got to practice and it was a win-win situation. So that, but see how every time you have, you, the thing with membership models is I don't love cookie cutter business, mem I don't like cookie cutter businesses in general, but especially not memberships. What's awesome about this is that you can figure out what you want to do in your business and create a guaranteed income. My membership covered 100% of my overhead. And then the only thing I had to pay for was, I mean, honestly, my paycheck and then my groomer's paycheck because it covered my bathers, it covered all the overhead. So the groomers made money, right? Because the groomers never had to groom any of the membership dogs because my bathers were all training on those membership dogs. Um, so it worked out really, really well, but that's what I at the time wanted in my business. Now, fast forward to one of my coaching clients who's Australian, and she had a ton of cat grooming clients, and she's feeling exclusive, and she just wanted to groom less pets. She didn't want to have to worry about how she was going to, you know, check in and everybody out. She wanted to be home for her daughter. She wanted a different life. Um, so we created her a membership where people prepaid, for their grooming a month in advance. That way, if for some reason they didn't pay, she had a month to figure it out and get a new person that spot. And she has a VA who double checks to make sure that everyone has paid. And after they've paid, they just takes, she takes that money, obviously, and just does all that. 
It makes it really convenient for her because she already has next month's money in the bank. And if they cancel, they have to give her a 30 days notice anyway, which she already has. And even then, she's got a wait list. And it just makes her life easier because she doesn't have to check in and out anybody because everyone knows what they're getting because that's what they paid for their monthly fee. And if they do want more, um, she has different packages that kind of encompass all the add-ons. So it's just very simplified. And she's like, okay, you have to upgrade to this package. And you would do that. You know, so it makes everything so much simpler. And it was really hard for the transition. But once she did, she was a lot happier. Now, that pricing is going to be a lot higher. Why? Because we're guaranteeing you a spot. And we're guaranteeing you that you are going to be a part of this exclusive membership. Way too often, we don't value the, the exclusivity that something like a membership offers. You know, there are a set number of spots. Um, think about like a country club you know, or other kind of community clubs. You know, um, in Boston, there's a lot of these um, clubs that you have to pay a big fee to become a member of and then pay yearly dues. Now, I'm not a big fan of paying a due um, or, you know, having a fee to start a membership. To me, I think it's more than enough to ask for them to prepay a month. And if anything, you know, that could potentially be a deal breaker for some people. But to me, I don't want to promise someone a spot unless if they have already prepaid. Because I don't want to chase anyone for money. And even if I do chase people for money, I want to make sure that, like let's say if all of the dues come out the first week of the month, right? Well, if Fluffy comes in and their dues haven't come out and they said, oh, I had a new debit card, insert nonsense, right? Do you then groom that dog? Or do you move them? How do you handle that? It gets really sticky. Versus if you have the money already from, you know, having a month ahead and say, okay, well, if we haven't received the money by the 15th, we will have to revoke your status. But you already have been paid for the groom that they just gave you. So that's why I prefer it that way. And pricing wise, it's going to be more because there's a set number of spots. And again, that can be a great way if you guys want to do this very boutique style grooming. Um, a lot of people that have this very um, for lack of a better term, like you have amazing grooms, like that really beautiful scissor finish. Or maybe like you are um, very good at training. You're very good at training puppies or training aggressive dogs or training dogs that have had really poor, bad experiences. A membership is a great way to go because you're saying, okay, I'm going to allocate this amount of time and I only have this many members and this is how it's going to go. If you guys notice, I obviously am a big fan of memberships. Basically, most of Savvy Groomer is memberships. Because I want someone to commit to being part of a community, commit to them growing and learning, commit to choosing something better for their lives. Man, that is a loud truck walking coming by. Let's let that go by. I know it's just finally kind of summery. So I've got my windows open. But that's where we're at, guys with that membership. So let's talk about one-on-one. -on -one. The first thing I will say about one-on-one -on -one is it is extraordinarily difficult to scale one-on-one -on -one grooming. Why is that? The long story short is now one-on-one -on -one can also be things like mobile. You know, mobile really is one-on-one. -on -one. It's already considered luxury because obviously I come to you, I groom your pet start to finish, I hand you back your pet, and then I then I leave and I go to my next pet. So we have this kind of one-on-one -on -one stuff. But what's happening is a lot of you guys are basically doing mobile in a shop. And then you're not taking into account how many less dogs you can do if you do everyone start to finish. So even if we do our regular two-point shih tzu, right? Little five-strip, half-inch on the body, round teddy bear face, nothing fancy. Shih Tzu, he's going to take an hour. So in theory, you know, we're going to do this dog in an hour. But unless if you have overlap 
where you put the dogs into a crate or an X-Pen or a cabana and wait for that person to come in, there's always going to be some like some time. Um, you know, and it's really interesting because a lot of people are like, well, I have people wait outside. I'm going to have people wait in the lobby. I'm going to have people, you know, go and come back. Well, I want you to think about the people that can afford this very high-end grooming. Have They have better things to do than sit in a parking lot once a month and wait for the dog to be done. They really do. Unless they're neurotic and crazy. Like, you have to be really neurotic and crazy to sit in a car for an hour in front of a grooming salon and wait for your dog. Um, and most people don't want to sit in a grooming salon and you don't want them to sit in the grooming salon. You know, anyone who has that kind of money generally has a busy business. Now, so you'd be like, well, they'll do some work in the car. It's going to get old real fast. It really will. You know, and so you're like, oh, I've been doing that forever. I'm like, I promise you, if somebody offered them a better, more comfortable, more inviting situation, a better business, they would leave you. Not because they don't love you. Not because that's not, I'm going to sound terrible. Like, not that they don't love you. It's just very inconvenient. I mean, I hate when my son is at karate and I have to sit there. So I don't. So you know what I do? Is I go around and I say, hey, kid, uh, you can wait 10, 15 minutes while mom comes back. You know, hang out with your friends because I'm going to go run a quick errand. I'm not going to sit there one or one day or two, you know, and just wait for him. It, you know, it's crazy. I have too many things to do. Um, and especially now where you can't go in and just wait. And even then, like, that's insane. Like, who has time to just sit around? So I want you to kind of think about that because that's, that's more realistic. Now, if you are somewhere that has a coffee shop, if you're near somewhere that has a some sort of market whether that is a grocery store, whether that is a, you know, TJ Maxx or wherever, Neiman Marcus, whatever your brand is going to do, that is going to be a little bit different. And Erica's saying so many good ideas. I love the idea of membership. I love me memberships. I love them. Um, I will say, guys, uh, if all of my one-on-one coaching could just be building grooming business memberships, I would totally do that. I love them so much and they're so fun to build because you get to figure out how you want to grow it based on what you like. So if you like I had a great call the a couple of days ago, maybe it was today. I don't even know anymore. I'm losing track of time. Um, And they they were like, no, I was thinking about just doing doodles. I'm like, yes, build a membership of just doodles. And some of you guys are like, I hate doodles, but they love them. And think about that exclusivity. You know, like, oh, yeah, like you're, you know, they're at the dog park. Like, oh, my doodle's done, and you know, here. Really? I can't get an appointment. No, you have to be a member. It's members only. You feed into that. People love that. It was, you know, they do that at Disney. They have the pass holders, and the pass holders are the only people that can get that. You could do tons of things with memberships. You can say, like, you can't have weekends unless if you're a membership. You know, if you if you want to continue to groom Saturdays, you can say only members can be on Saturdays. You know, only members can have weekends um, or evenings. There's so much. There's so much you can do to create that. It's so much fun. But going back to our one-on-one, you can't scale this business. So if you are a solopreneur, which is one groomer owner, at best you can have a bather and have the bather hold on to the dog and kind of stop working until the client picks up. But how many more dogs can you really do? It, it's not, you're not able to do, like in my shop, and again, we were a high volume shop. We were holistic. We took into account everything with the pet. Every pet got a lot of time, care, and attention. But we had 40 dogs a day with five people. I mean, that's that's a lot of dogs. And that is with two groomers, two bathers, and uh, well, two groomers and like one bather, one blow dryer and a receptionist. And we did a lot of dogs. I mean, that's almost, you know, it's a little, uh, it's like eight, eight dogs a person. Um, that's a lot, especially cause we had a little tiny shop, but anyway, so I want you to consider 
is that what you want? And if it is, that's fine. But with this one-on-one, -on -one, that's why I prefer it to be a membership because then you're guaranteed money. Because if you do everyone start to finish and someone does not show up, if somebody cancels last minute, if somebody um, for whatever reason shows up late, shows up early, it throws a wrench in everything you do. And if you have their money anyway, you care a lot less. And now obviously with one-on-one, -on -one, you need to have really tight policies. You have to have the personality to really be cut and dry and say, this is how it is. You have to do what I say to do. And if you don't do what I say you're going to do, then you're out. And that takes a very specific personality. Um, I don't even like being that cut and dry. You know, but it's not because it's harder than being mobile. Because if, if I show up at 2 o'clock and your appointment's at 2 o'clock, you have no excuse not to be ready. I came to you. But when you add into the fact whether where they could be driving to you, you know, where, you know, there's so many other factors that we just don't have any control over because they're coming to us. So pricing for that needs to be really high because even if you want to scale it in the sense you want to add a bather, which is fine, you're still not going to be doing significantly more dogs. So then I have, this is happening a lot in Facebook groups and I love you all, but I keep seeing this, hey, I want to hire a second groomer for one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm like, oh no, don't do that. No, 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 no. And I'll tell you really quickly why. When you have staff, someone has to manage your staff. Somebody has to be in charge of quality control and you should never allow your groomer to check in and out a dog. Why? Because I want them to be attached to me. Well, I should say the business and not to my groomer. I don't necessarily want them to be attached to me. With one-on-one, -on -one, you really do want them to be attached to you. But in general, the business is what I want them to be attached to. Because what's going to happen is, and again, I know, I know this is exactly the opposite of what you hear in the rest of the industry. And I feel so weird, like, Hey, you know what? All those, and they're all, they're all absolutely right. What used to work no longer works. People are hopping shops way too much. Um, we need more groomers. It's a slot, supply and demand issue. And they know if they build that relationship, they're going to take those clients with them. And some of you guys are like, well, I'm not worried. You know, I'm not worried because there's more than enough dogs, right? Well, there's more than enough dogs. But at the same time, you spent all that money building up that relationship for somebody else to take your hard earned work and go elsewhere. That's not really fair. And I hate to break it to you guys, but that's not how, that's not how businesses work. Can you imagine having a coffee shop and having a barista, like who's the one that like does everyone's coffee and is like really friendly and they're like, oh, I'm going to go open my own coffee and all that money and all that time and all that effort for you building up your coffee shop they're just going to go open up their own and take all your customers. That's not fair. You're the one you're the one who invested all the time and money. I mean, it, it's what a lot of people do, but it's wrong. It's wrong. You know, if you know, here's the thing is like if you as a business owner want to send people their way, that's up to you. But technically, if they were to solicit your customers, that's actually theft. Cuz you as the business owner own the customers not the groomer you know that's just the truth but anyway i digress let me let me reel that back so with your one-on-one -on -one, you're like i want to hire a second groomer and river is in your head and she's like no you're like well why not who is going to maintain quality of the grooms now i'm going to assume you you hire somebody who is a competent groomer and you're like well why would i have to double check their grooms because it's your reputation because it's your name on that dog. The manager, whoever the manager is, and guess what? If you are the boss and there's no other manager, that's you. You need to double check every dog because if there's ever a problem, let's say the dog has some sort of um, skin infection or the dog has like clipper burn, which ends up always being like I shaved him at a dog and all of a sudden his skin's a mess. Oh, shocker. Well, guess what? If you didn't look over the dog, 
it's the employee's word against the owner's word. And you always, unfortunately, have to side with the owner. Because if you didn't see it, you know, I mean, that's just it. You can't side with your groomer, which sounds like crazy because you want to always side with your groomer. But that's why we have quality control. And everyone should have a second person look at a dog. It's the way it is. And we should all do before and after photos too, which I'm always shocked when you guys don't do that. I'm like, listen, like that saved my butt one time, the before and after photo. That's another story for another day. If you guys want to hear about that, um, I'd love to tell you more about that. But someone's got to maintain, someone has to maintain quality. Somebody has to manage your staff. And because you're doing all these dogs start to finish, if someone let's say for whatever reason, is sick, uh, needs a week, hurts themselves and needs a week or two off. In a regular salon, you could start shifting over. You might not be able to cover another groomer's entire shift, but if you had three groomers, right, in a regular shop where the dogs are there for about four hours, you could take the third person's groom dogs, split it between the two people and get it done because you have time to juggle these dogs and figure it out and work as a team. But you don't have that luxury when you do one one on one, when you do a dog start to finish. Even in a mobile, if you guys are like, well, in a mobile, I couldn't do that. But there's only one van. So if that person in a one on one was in a van, you would just cover their shift. Right? That's that's also why when you're scaling with mobiles, you have more than one groomer. You have one van. And you would do your mobile so that it's basically running 24 seven before you get your second van, right? You'd have two shifts a day, seven days a week. And then when that has been consistent, that's when you would get your second van. Because the shop is one shop and you can have multiple people during ones and that's the whole point of it. It's not like I'm gonna have one-on-one Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then she's gonna be one-on-one Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Because if it was that way, you could just cover her shift. But if it's one-on-one and they're doing it at the same time, that gets tricky because what are you going to do? And if they quit, what's the plan? Is the plan to send those clients with her? Or, and I, sh- I guess it's kind of sexist because it could be a man or a woman. Um, you know, are you going to just tell all those people that have loved and relied on your business that you can't service them anymore because we're in a groomer drought guys it is not that easy to find staff it's also really impossible to train baby groomers and young groomers and inexperienced groomers with one-on-one because there's not another dog it's not like okay you take this dog out go do this comb and then call me over so I can come look at it this is really designed one one on one start to finish is really boutique. It's really designed to be a solopreneur style business. It's really hard to scale, if not impossible. You know, there's a reason why Petco PetSmart, if they can make money, they will. You know, if you notice, they try really hard not to get people to do express grooms because it just throws a wrench in everything just is what it is so when you're pricing it and you're doing one-on-one you need to be very wildly aware of the fact that that's it you and maybe a bather and if you're lucky one other groomer but if that groomer leaves you're stuck in the linchpin and again your personality you may be like it's totally worth it to have to um potentially let's let's say they're grooming for easy math five dogs a day, five days a week. Let's say they have 100 clients coming to them every single month. And so do you. So you have 200 clients. You can groom 100, they groom 100. So they quit. Now what are you going to tell those 100 people? Now, some people just work double. And in fact, I was on a coaching call with somebody who, that's what they had to do. They ended up grooming like 13 dogs a day. That's awful. That's awful. You know? And so... It makes more sense if you're going to do one-on-one. It, it's going to be a it's going to be a season. It's going to be a solopreneur. Um, and if you've built up a business that's one-on-one, you have made them very attached to you. 
it's easier in a membership and it's easier in a traditional salon to have them attached to the business and not so much to you personally. Um, and you guys accidentally make it really about you versus the business. Um, things like you, you know, whenever I say, okay, tell me why it's important for someone would want you. And you're like, oh, my education. Oh, my this. Oh, my that. But when you hire somebody else, are they going to have the same education level? Are they going to have the same style? Are they going to have the same everything? Probably not. Because if they did, they probably have their own shop. Um, and the other thing is, too, with one-on-one -on -one pricing, it's very hard to make payroll make sense. Because remember, we want to keep under 30%. So let me go ahead and pull up my little calendar. So if they're grooming five dogs in eight hours, let's say being there's time in between for the dog to get checked up and the dog to get dropped off. And that's not a lot of time, guys. Remember, so if it's eight hours, we're going to divide that by five. That's an, an hour and six. So let's call it an hour and like 40 minutes. Let's see. Uh, let me do it this way. 60 minutes times eight hours is 480 minutes. And this is how you know it's live because I'm like, oh crap, I hope this math isn't crazy. So I'm going to divide that by five dogs. That gives me 96 minutes per dog. That's not bad. Because when you figure the dog takes an hour, so I'm going to minus 60 minutes to groom the dog, that's 36 minutes. So it's about 15 minutes on either side, 18 minutes on either side. Um, you know, when you're actually doing that, so that's not that bad. So if I'm going to say, I'm going to charge you like, okay, well, I'm going to charge a hundred bucks per dog. So they're going to make 500 bucks a day. Both times 0.3. So I have 150 bucks for the day to pay my bathe, my groomer rather. I'm sorry. So let's divide that by eight. That would mean if you're charging a hundred dollars, they're grooming five dogs start to finish. They're really only going to get 18, 19 bucks an hour. If you're charging them a hundred bucks. This sucks. So they would have to groom eight dogs. Well, if the grooming takes eight hours and they're checking in and out dogs and they have nowhere to put the dog in between, they're not going to groom eight dogs. The math doesn't work. Or you're going to end up with overtime and that's going to cost you a freaking fortune. Because after 40 hours, guys, you have to pay them time and a half. And just to, you know, just to rem remind yourself, let's say you're paying 20 bucks an hour, right? Well, it's 30, it's an extra $10 an hour. You know, an extra two hours could be 60 bucks. That could be almost the entire price of one of those dogs. Um, Crystal's saying, guilty. I didn't realize how attached I made them until I had to try to get them to understand I need to book them with one of the other groomers. Absolutely. And Crystal, I actually have a great video all about why don't my customers want to go with my other groomers. And we do. We get them attached to us instead of our business. And that makes it real. And then you're like, why are they upset? Of course they're upset. And we've unintentionally done that. Um, and a lot of times it becomes a problem. That's why in my shop, we didn't book them with a specific groomer. You got whoever was available. And it was really tough in the beginning. Uh, and I will tell you, one of the best things I ever did was separate the groom room from the reception. One, for noise. And then two, because, if, and I hate to say, I say it this way, it's really none of their business who grooms the dog. Because it's not it's not an industry where, like a hairdresser, it's not like that. It's really not. You should be able to go to a salon and have somebody of quality who's going to do that. Now, if you want to run that solopreneur kind of job where, you know, you, by them coming to you, you're guaranteeing you're going to groom the dog, then you have to charge way more for that. You know, and that's the tough part. Um, and a lot of times you guys build what is going to be a solopreneur business and then you want to expand and the transition is very uncomfortable, both for you and for the client, because you've made them dependent upon you. You've made them comfortable with you. And so one-on-one, -on -one, when you want to scale it, it's not really, it's really difficult and you have to be very lucky for it to actually go especially if you're talking about like, let's say four groomers. If you have four groomers grooming, you know, let's say five to eight dogs start to finish. Well, is that a receptionist checking it in and out? Or are you gonna have four people fighting for the front, right? Who's gonna check in and out that dog? 
And that's where you would have to give up grooming and you would have to be the manager, probably the receptionist, and do all of that. Um, but it's it's definitely a major shift and it is really difficult. Um, if you're going to want to do one-on-one grooming, I highly suggest one of two things. I highly suggest you either in, you know, have it as legally, very legally, have it as a grooming out of your home because then you can offset some of the overhead because a lot of times the shops you're paying like $1,200, $1,500, $2,000 for the space and you could fit three people, but especially in a groomer drought in that business model, it's not going to happen. Or you go mobile. I mean, mobile, you have control of when you show up. You know, so there's no like waiting for a client. You're like, hey, I'm going to text you. You're going to walk back out, get your pet, and I'm going to go to my next spot. And you have the window, the flexible window, versus them having a flexible window. Because if they get stuck in traffic on their way to come pick up that dog, you always have to consider where is that dog going to go. You know, so that is really what it comes down to. And I hope that's enlightened you guys a little bit on just different pricing because I know some people were talking about, you know, one-on-one and scaling it or membership and like how to even begin pricing. And I think those are considerations that I don't think you guys have considered. Um, Not that, you know, it's a bad thing. It's just one of those things that, you know, it's important for you to consider. Can I help you? A little friend over here. He needs a bath. He's getting... Getting groomed on Saturday. Whoop, whoop. So that is our uh, class today, all about membership and one-on-one pricing, all about things that you probably haven't thought about, and now you have. Those little light bulb moments. I love it. So if you guys are interested in learning more about pricing or price increasing, I have this amazing six-week masterclass coming up, guys. It is coming up Sunday. We are closing the doors um, Sunday, I believe, or before the class, I actually have no idea. I don't know if we agreed Saturday, if we agreed Sunday, but no matter what, before the class starts, it will be closed. Now it is $600. That is an investment. However, think about all of the money you will make once you have this price increase together. It's going to be absolutely exciting. Crystal's like, she signed up. Whoop, whoop. Good job, girly. I'm so excited. I'm really, really excited, guys. You have no idea. Like, like we have been talking all about how, sorry, can I help you? Someone needs attention. What can I say? Um, Does someone someone have that, like, happen? Like, you're just, like, talking and then your pet loves on you and you're just like, oh, my little heart. You know, my poodle does that. She'll put her little face and just look at me pathetically. I'm like, oh, my little heart just melted right there. Mm. Sorry. Don't mind me. I lost my train of thought. But yeah, I'm really excited for this price increase class. Like, really excited. And the reason I'm excited is because we as an industry need to raise our prices. We want to pay our people well. We want to live the lives we want. We don't want to work so many hours. We want to do this. And in order to do that, we have to increase our prices. Our prices have not kept up with inflation. It's awful. So we need to do something about it as an industry. And I am super excited to lead this charge And I am just overjoyed, overjoyed. So I'd love for you guys to sign up. I know Jasmine's going to yell at me. I'm like, I don't remember how to like make it so that it um, makes it all pretty in the chat box. I'm just going to put, woo, she'll yell. You know, she's, she's very smart. She's my little, if you guys don't know who Jasmine is, she is my savvy groomer tech and she's wonderful. She's the person that if you ever have any trouble signing in, You definitely want to message her because technology is not my friend. But if you guys want to sign up, please sign up before we go live. Um, I don't know when I'm going to do this again. I know I will do it again. But considering I'm going to be at Atlanta Pet Fair, I'm going to be, I have my business retreat in July, and then I'm going to go to Super Zoo in August. I'm not sure when I'm going to do this price increase class again. And this class is really going to be amazing. We're going to talk about how much money you want to make, how much money you've invested in order to build a business of that you want. How much money can you do? How many dogs can we do or cats we can do? 
You know, we're going to have scripts and templates for you to go ahead and work through. And then after that, you can go ahead and, you know, we have troubleshooting. It's going to be at 7 p.m. on e 7 p.m. Eastern, so New York, Boston time, uh, 7 p.m. on Sundays. And it's going to be 30 minutes to an hour worth of content. And then after that, we're going to have spotlight questions and just general talk. So, and we're going to be there till about 8.30. So we have an hour and a half each week. Um, obviously, we're also going to be in the group. And if we have uh, more people sign up, then we will just add a second um, spotlight question or office hours to help support you guys through this. And I think it's going to be really important for you guys to come live. I think it's going to be really important for you guys to engage and really do the homework. And, you know, I've never been more proud of something. Like, I'm really proud of Personal Finance and Unleash, my 12-week course on, you know, getting your finances under control. But this one, I just think is going to make such an impact. You know, and my hope is that if you guys make more money, you can invest in other things. Whether, whoop, whether that's one-on-one -on -one coaching, whether that's, um, we're, you know, starting next month, we're going to be doing group coaching, you know, whether that is just stuff for you, maybe time off, you know, one of my recent coaching clients, uh, we did a, we did a massive price increase and we simplified everything in his business. And what was amazing is that it was really cool because it was like he ended up filling three weeks and the fourth week he's like I've already hit my numbers goal and I said okay well then just take that week off and so now he only works three weeks a month I mean can you imagine having an entire week off every month and making the same if not more money than you're making now I mean that is the dream and it happens guys I made more money grooming in my van from 8 a.m. to about 2 p.m four days a week than I did running a shop with five employees doing 40 dogs a day. And it really is strategy. It really is doing a price increase that makes sense. You know, so whether you're a solopreneur, whether you want to do membership, whether you have a staff of 10, no matter what, this class is for you. And I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of me. And there's not, you guys probably never hear me say about it. Like, I'm really proud of this product. Um, and I'm just really grateful that I get to share it with you guys. But anyway, I digress. Uh, if you guys aren't ready to invest, that's okay. You know, there's no harm in that. I would like you guys, if you're not ready to invest financially, but still come into our free Facebook group, Savvy Pet Professionals. There we talk about personal finance, business, and lifestyle. We do have some exciting new things coming down the pipeline uh, in the Facebook group. Um, I'm really excited, guys. I'm, you know, we've got a lot of, a lot of good things coming down. A lot of it just comes down to, you know, getting it all together. I feel really weird because I feel like I work on things for like uh, behind the scenes, and then I'm like, I'm like I'm such, I hate surprises, and I'm, I'm a bad liar. So like, I get very excited, and I'm like, I can't say anything. I can't say anything because it's not done. If I say it now, I'm gonna screw myself because everyone's gonna be like, I want that, and I'm like, I can't give it to you yet. So it's really tough for me to keep secrets. So just so you know, never tell me anything. Um, that's not true. Like if it's something like, I don't gossip. I will definitely sip tea with my friends. But I don't gossip. But don't give me any information that you, like if like, someone's like, uh, I'm pregnant, don't tell anybody. I'm like, I can't. Like, please don't, please don't put that on me. I can't promise anything. Or like, I'm going to get a puppy. Don't tell my husband. I'm like, I'm not good at that. So don't, don't ask me to do that, guys. But anyway, I cannot wait to see you guys next week. And hopefully I will see you in the price increase class. If not, like I said, hop on the free Facebook group. All right, guys. So as always, and we have an awesome evening. And happy grooming. i got to find my outro. I don't know where it is. Some days I just feel like, what the hell am I doing with my life? I'm just a hot mess express sometimes. Bye, guys. Happy grooming.